The fog lifts as the last of the street lamps flickers on. The narrow street is empty, with only the sounds of a few people making their way home from one place to another. There's laughter and music from a window, but it is faint and dreamlike. From the bench I can make out the shape of an animal, maybe a cat or a raccoon scurrying into the darkness of the alley. It is searching for food or a companion. My lungs fill with air and my chest rises. A mist comes from my exhalations as they meet the chill of the evening. I left work early tonight. I needed time and a moment of quiet to sort out my thoughts. It's someone's birthday, although I can't remember whose. I think I'm a bad person. I seem to succeed only at failing. Tonight is important, I know that, but I cannot bring myself to take the steps from the bench. Amid the quiet, I create a list of arguments, of reasons why I can't make the party, but none of them seems to encapsulate the agony of small talk in a stifling room. Lights too bright, faces too happy, music too loud, and life too real and effervescent. She wants me to be there, and I have no reason to say no. I am angry, but not at her. I am angry at life, at my job, at the demands that I become a person I don't recognize. None of these things is anyone's fault but mine. But the memory is sharp tonight. The early winter is always a reminder of another year that passed, another year dead behind me. And I cannot hang on to anything that I used to feel. Tonight I, I will be social, I tell myself, because I promised her. I thought about it at work all day, filling out forms and smiling when expected, and as soon as I left, instead of heading to the apartment, I came here a tiny road that belongs in another city, a quiet escape from the city that has shaped me. I let the weak overhead light and the memories trick me with their maybes, and I hold my arms around myself, warmed not by my coat, but by forgetting. Lately, I have been thinking a lot about cities, for massive collections of sterile buildings and anonymous interactions. They have a life to them, each unique. Every city I have visited has affected me, each one taking something of me when I left and replacing it with something of itself. I wonder if we would be the people we are if the map of time had not taken the route it had. If we had started somewhere else, or made the choice to live in another place. Often people claim that we're shaped by our choices and by the people around us, but I feel shaped more by where I've been than by the people whom I met along the way. There's more of Paris in me than there is of my parents, more of New York than there is of my wife. Inside each building there are parallel lives and I imagine each one and how it could have played out, wondering why I spent so much time in illusion. There is the way the cities snake themselves around you, into your heart, until you are part of them and they are a part of you. One day you are sitting alone in a quiet place, and you know you are only who you are because of those sidewalks and stories and the way that each city is unique and knows you intimately. Somewhere between childhood and now, I lost my sense of taste. Not the taste as in fashion, as in that man has absolutely no taste, but the literal sense. I still sometimes taste foods, but only as an outline or a ghost of the memory of what they taste like. When I try something new, it has no flavor, because recollection does not give it any. So many of my memories come from experiences linked to that sense, as if my life became nothing but fantasy when my tongue could no